Hello, my name is Blaine Reed. I'm the uh, IPM agent for Hale Swisher in Floyd County. We are down here at the Lubbock Experiment Station in a cotton field that's at risk for thrips damage. And we're going to go through uh, what a thrip can do, the damage they'll be doing, and how also to uh, scout your field for them. So thrips are very minute insects. They are fairly unique. Uh, I've heard some people actually refer to them as no seams. They're, they are that minute and small. They have one mandible that they like to uh, pierce or uh, as we used to refer to them, rasp uh, the skin cells of uh, plants and uh, suck up the juices that are flowing. Uh, this time of year, as cotton uh, being an acceptable host, it's one of the few things that are actually green in the area as these thrips will be moving out of wheat or any other uh, winter type crop. Later in the year, they'll be more attracted to uh, corn as it gets bigger, but uh, right here at this tender stage, cotton at this uh, uh, cotyledon up to uh, pinhead stage, all the true leaf stages, first, second, third, fourth, fifth leaf stage, are all going to be at risk for thrips damage. So this will be very, very important to uh, determine the, the age of the plant and how many thrips per true leaf we're going to have on, on these uh, plants. So here we are with this young plant. Uh, we've got what we refer to as cotyledon leaves here. These were packed inside the seed as the plant emerged and came out, ready to photosynthesize as it's coming along. In this area, we've got the apical meristem, or the growing point of the plant, which will eventually turn out with true leaves and the entire plant. It's very important early on in this plant's development that we keep this tender area where all the cell division, elongation, differentiation is taking place healthy, and as with the uh, small amount of thrips damage as possible. So when we're getting these uh, thrips data counts and thrips counts, I definitely like to get all the way across the field uh, walking. It's an outstanding time to evaluate your stand, look for any weed problems you might have, and of course the this age across the field. And we're stopping to get those, those uh, thrips plants at uh, random places that represent the field. Uh, when I do take the time to kneel down, I like to get two plants while I'm down there. And I really do suggest that you go ahead and crawl down and get get down close with those uh, plants because thrips are so flighty when you pull this plant up to look the plant over uh, when slightly disturbed the thrips will take flight and will fly away before you ever see them another method folks might try to use is to take a dixie cup cover the plant pull it up and beat it into right here into the cup and then count uh, i don't prefer that uh, it's very very easy to uh, scare the thrips away uh, and, and run them off that way so i, I really think the best way is to get down and uh, look in that uh, terminal area for adults and larvae so here we are we've got uh, gone across the field and we've stopped at a random place in the field uh, to get a representative sample of the plant stage and the number of thrips we see per plant. So what I like to do is take a pocket knife or a pen, something very, very uh, simple that you'll have with you like that. Look over the upper portion of the leaf, the under portion of the leaf, both true leaves and cotyledon leaves, looking for thrips and thrips damage. Many of the thrips are going to like to get down into that very tender apical meristem area, and you're going to want to Take your knife or your pen and open uh, these unfurled leaves and see if you can get any thrips to come running out of there. You're going to need to keep up with your total number of thrips you find per plant and of course the number of uh, true leaves you have out there. Our economic threshold in West Texas for thrips is roughly one thrips per true leaf stage until we get into reproductive stage with start seeing uh, pinheads and match head squares on the plant.